Hey all, it's been quite a bit and I wanted to revisit my Let's Build with Ruby on Rails series and kind of continue that trend. I think it's up to almost 80 videos now or so and that playlist on YouTube and my blog and this one is going to be a doozy. So it's it's been on my radar to figure out how to build a marketplace style app and I think I've had some requests for it. Something like Kickstarter, but you essentially can back things and... Um, that's the point of this whole series. I'm not sure how many videos it's going to be in the end, but uh, it was kind of a doozy to set up. There's a few um, ideas and concepts to kind of get down. So there's this concept of a user model, and within that model, there can be an admin user, a maker, and a backer. So the maker is uh, someone who actually provides something to buy. The backer is the person who actually funds that thing. Um, so I'm calling this um, back my idea. So it's similar to Kickstarter. It's it's nothing like uh, feature set uh, compliant. So it's nothing like similar in terms of the full features that I'm trying to say. But it is the concept of getting you up to speed on using Stripe as a Connect Stripe Connect resource. So with Connect, you can do quite a bit. Um, it allows you to be kind of that. Uh, platform in between multiple parties who are exchanging payment sources. So commonly in a typical app, the app itself would make the purchase flow and receive the funds from a customer and that would be it. That would be final, whether it's a subscription or a basic charge. Uh, with this flow, it's basically the concept of giving the user the concept of opening up, say, their own shop, providing things for sale or posting something that can be bought. That goes through their own Stripe account, but you kind of oversee that process in a sense and earn a percentage off of each each transaction. So that's why the marketplace thing, it's a hard thing to build because there's a supply and demand side because you're basically, I've heard it put this way that you're running two businesses at once, which is already harder than running one business at once. And if you can make it work, it's super lucrative, but otherwise it's, completely hard um so the big names out there that do something like this are ebay and um even amazon kind of does something like this um, but of course the the funding apps like gofundme or kickstarter or anything else that's similar in that marketplace style offers this this concept i think etsy does something like this too uh, but for our our purposes we're going to basically build out the shell of the thing i'm going to use my kickstart tailwind theme to get started and kind of save some time with that we're gonna kind of use a little uh, stimulus js to kind of do some dynamic side of things uh, some tailwind of course that comes with the tailwind template i use and uh, this is kind of what our data structure is going to look like we'll have a user model with the basics and then for each project we'll have um, basically the, the title of the project is what's going to be an idea in the, in the sense. So say you're building an idea that's going to be game changing for games or something and you need funding and you can go the consumer donation route and with using this back my idea app. So uh, that's the whole concept. It's very f fictional. So don't take this and just run with it. I don't know that it would work. But um, something like Kickstarter is the inspiration. So with the project, um, we're going to have some polymorphic associations, which is something I haven't really covered yet, I don't think, uh, for comments. So that's the concept of basically allowing any resource in your app to have a comment-capable properties, as long as it has a commentable ID column and a commentable type column. Uh, the naming convention here is commentable. So able is kind of the convention of a polymorphic morphic association in a Rails app. Uh, more on that later. I won't go into too, too much detail. Um, then we're going to use uh, nested attributes to create perks for each project. So this is what you subscribe to. It's, think of it as like plans within the project that you could subscribe to that the um, customer or backer would want to help out the project to back the idea. So that's relatively simple. We'll use, uh, like I said, nested attributes. That's where that stimulus JS comes in. So just a little sprinkle of that will help uh, make it dynamic and such that when we create a project, we can add perks dynamically each time. And then the concept of the user who creates the project is now the project owner. They receive the funding. Um, in order to create a project, they need to connect their Stripe account, which we'll use 
uh, with combination of the Stripe gem, Stripe, uh, another Stripe OAuth gem that hooks into device. And then also, what else am I missing there? Uh, I can't quite remember, but something like that. And then comments are pretty self-explanatory, pretty basic, but they are polymorphic, so that's something new. So that's just basically a, a way to make it repeatable or reusable in other models if we wanted to. Here's I'm, I basically when I I'll just go behind the scenes. When I draft up a, a blog post or a series like this, I pretty much write the blog post first, and then kind of just shell it out from there, uh, refine it, and then post it later. Uh, but this is my guide to get going. So I'll, basically, this is how we start, and I just kind of go down the list of doing things and provide snippets and whatnot. So I'll be referencing this on another screen, um, but definitely look to the blog for this whole complete guide. If you're more of a reader type, that's perfectly fine. And honestly, that's kind of how I get uh, my bearings in some cases. So I'll pretty much hide this for now and reference it, like I said, on another screen. Um, so we'll start by building the app and initializing it. Uh, I can show you a walkthrough of what it looks like. It's by no means perfect, and it honestly looks pretty ugly to my standards, but I ran out of time and didn't really want to focus on the look and feel. Um, but right now, I, I created a new account, basically, when you are logged out, in this case, uh, create a new project, you're you know prompted to sign in or sign up. So I already signed up just to save a little time. I'm um, just using dummy data here. So I'm, I'm signed in. I want to create a new project, but before I do, I make the user connect with Stripe first. So we'll try to do this. And you're going to get this um, concept. And I'm logged in already as my own account. It's my master account on my actual Stripe account, but I have a sub plan called Back My Idea. Here's like Hello Rails and stuff too. I probably should have made just something tests just to not share that stuff. but. What I want to do in this case, when you when you do this OAuth pattern, notice the top here, it's in development mode. So you can skip a lot of the, the building setup form submission stuff that Stripe makes you go through to set up an account. In this case, the account cannot connect to itself because I'm the actual platform in between the connect store. So you see it's connect.com, that connect.stripe.com, and then we're doing OAuth kind of stuff behind the scenes. But what I need to do is actually sign into a different user account to be able to connect to this account. So I actually have another one set up that is just like a test one um, for this purpose. And this will be like my customer account or my merchant account. Say I'm, I'm, I'm joining this back my D app and I want to, I have a project that I want to have people back. And this is that account concept. So I'll log in and you gotta provide the right password. With that logged in, I think it should redirect you back to this page. Yep, and then it's saying back my idea would like to start accepting payments with Stripe. For now, since this is dummy data, we can skip it, which is great. And it'll go back and redirect to a URL you pass in your Stripe uh, settings, which we'll get to later. That is where that, once that OAuth flow is complete, it will redirect the user to here. So now I can actually create a project. And normally I'd have a thumbnail ready. I'd, don't think I do at this point, but it's not a deal breaker. So I'll just say this project donation goal. It can be anything. I was put 10,000. Um, normally I would have validations and stuff set up on this stuff, but I think that's, I didn't want to spend too much time on the specifics of the app. Definitely recommend setting some boundaries behind this do donation goal. This is, I think, a number or a decimal field in the database. So we'd have to actually set some constraints there. We should also do so on the model. I didn't, um, but I recommend it. Uh, this is a test description. We use the tricks editor here for rich text. You can, you know, make things bold and whatnot. Pretty cool. And here's that nested attributes concept. Uh, if we want to add a perk, you create a title for the perk. So just perk one. And behind the scenes, this is actually creating plans in Stripe. And uh, so in, within your account, you'll have, since I'm going to do it subscription style, instead of just charges, I'm going to create a subscription. But within that subscription for this specific account, my WebCrunch account, um, the one as the person creating the project to back, will create separate plans that people can subscribe to. So you'll think of it as different, different tiers on a pricing page. So then we'll just say test description, amount will be 10. You can set a quantity um, 
And then here's that nested dynamic stuff with that stimulus JS coming up we'll do. So we'll say perk two test. We'll say the amount is $20 there and then we could just say 100 as well. This would be like monthly fees. So I should have said like monthly amount, but again, time. Perk three test 30 and then 100. So good enough, we've got three projects. We'll create that. It's gonna do a, a background job there to create the Stripe uh, plans in the background. Uh, if I go to, I believe my other account, I have a um, incognito window open here. And if we go to my other account, that one that we logged into, go to connect. Uh, I don't think it would actually be connect. In this case, it would be billing and subscriptions. And then we can check on products. Yeah, there we go. So those were just created right now. Perk one, two, and three. And it's going to be $30 a month. Um, and then we've got this uh, nice name that I've created dynamically from our app that we'll actually reference later. So that's kind of how that works. You notice I have tons of plans here that's just from testing. So normally you wouldn't have that many. So it's a mouthful, but this is the account of the person who's creating the project that needs to be backed. And this is what their account would look like. It wouldn't have the, the connect stuff itself. That's the, the primary account, which is my other account. That's not in incognito. This one over here, notice how I have it set up with connect. There's a little bit of onboarding flow there. We'll have to create. Um, I'm going to, I'm just going to reuse these accounts just to show by example, because it takes so much time to set this stuff up. But with Connect, you'll see a screen that looks, I'll just go back to this one like this. You could just say get started and you can go and, and kind of just do what you need to do there. So in our case, we'd build a platform or marketplace since it's like Kickstarter continue. And then it just kind of prompts you to do stuff. And there you go. So easy as that. Um, one thing that threw me for a loop was finding the keys and stuff for connect. So if you go to settings in your main app, your main account and go to connect settings, you'll see that stuff here. You'll get an actual client ID, which is what we'll reference coming up. And then you can customize branding and, and whatnot too. So this is all test data anyway, so it's all, all good. Um, but yeah, that'll, that one, for some reason they throw it in a different spot, which is one thing I wouldn't think Stripe would do. Uh, but essentially, once you create a project, we can add comments, test comment, and this is all Ajaxy, so cool. It added without refresh, and we can edit a comment, go back to this page. We see everything there still, update it, and it looks like something's up there. Initialize constant. We'll figure that out as we go. Um, but back to the project, here's what it looks like on the home page. Again, like I said, nothing special. If we go here, we can delete the project. Here's the perks since I backed my idea or created my project. But if I sign into a new account or sign up, uh, let's say, and we can go to that project. It's, it's not my project now, so I can actually back it. Here, you notice we have uh, analytics and stuff here too. These aren't 100% true, but um, I did my best there just for the sake of time. So if we do back this idea, we get the Stripe form on a new route. So subscription new, we can just do our test cards, back this uh, project, and back to this page. If we go to this project, we can't subscribe to that one again, but we can do other ones. So if we go to manage our subscriptions, very, very primitive um, interface to just cancel subscription here, and then it's called perk one. Uh, I could have made that nicer, but I ran out of time again. So to cancel it, you could just say, are you sure? It'll run this process to go and cancel it, and it's been canceled. So then we are able to go back to this one. So if we go back to the actual account of our uh, main account, uh, we notice we just got a subscription, J. Smitty, new project perk. This was not there. I think uh, canceled is the one we're looking for here. Yeah, here it is right here. So February 6th is the actual date today. Um, and we canceled this even though it was on a plan of $10 a month. We did that delete request and so on and so forth. So cool. 
I hope that sort of makes sense. It's confusing because the concept of being the, the owner of the app, you have these sub accounts to deal with. Um, so if you go into our main app, I could show you that we've connected a new account. We should be able to see a new account that's been connected in our connect dashboard. Oh, we need it on test data. There we go. There we go. It's going to come with like restricted stuff on it. You can ignore that for now since we're just doing this test stuff. Uh, but this is the test data that I've been using. So that that other account had WebCrunch, my Gmail, set up for it. The recent payments was ten dollars subscription created. We can check that one out and note the fees. This is actually looking into that account, which is nice. Uh, so here's the fee that we get. We get one dollar processing fee, which is all configured in the back end, but Stripe takes its cut too. So then the actual net is that much. So that's how it all works with Connect. It's, it's relatively simple once you can understand the concepts, uh, but I just wanted to walk through it to actually give you the real idea uh, before we dig in, because it is kind of confusing. So hopefully that helped. So I'm gonna probably end the video here just as an introduction, and then in the next one, we'll actually kick off the project and begin.